welcome to another episode of your favorite, Cherish TV. Yeah. It is so great to have you joining us. We are five friends. We don't always agree, but what we can agree on is that we want to make the world a better place. We yes. are women. We are women. <laughs> with different stories and different backgrounds, but we come together to have a conversation with each other. Five mm -hmm. friends. So we're going to get started. Welcome, great. Becky. Thank you. It's always great to have you. So good to be here. Welcome, Em. Hello. Dearest friend, Anastasia, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Ray, good to have you back. Good Elfra. morning, Em. Michaela Ray, we're going to get right into it. But I do need to say, you look stunning oh, today. You, you do. Thank you, friends. Yeah. I love how you're so nice as friends. Today. Give us tips. <laughs> we are nice, but we're also like wanting information. Yeah, well, I've, I've got the preg pregnancy glow going on over here, so okay. that helps a bit. But I, I honestly think you were just born beautiful. Oh, but. oh thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Thank All credit you. to Jesus. Yeah. But honestly, like, I have to get ready so fast these days because kids and getting out of the house and working and all that fun stuff. So yeah. one of my key things is dry shampoo. Oh, like okay. It's, yes. it's, a, it's a lifesaver. Oh my goodness. I am at any given time 50% caffeine, 50% dry shampoo. <laughs> and I like I don't like doing my own hair, so if I ever get a blow dry, I'm like, you know, working that thing for as many yeah. days as I oh, can. Yeah. Like a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun, fun filled fact is that people with curly hair don't ever need dry shampoo. Because the whole I point know. of our hair being curly is we have less oils. How often what? do you have to wash your hair? Yeah. Like I mean, I don't have to, really, I don't have to wash my hair for like five days, but wow. I do every like, every like three days um, and yeah, just tweak it a little oh. bit. So. so nice. Yeah. My fun fast trick these days is I got false lashes. I gave in. Oh. I was so traveling the, not the false ones, the extensions. The extensions. Yeah, yeah, extensions. So oh, yeah. I was going to go to, on a trip to Israel and I did not want to have to wear a lot of makeup because I have... My eyelashes are completely like clear, like blonde, and I look like a rat because my eyes are round, and then there's nothing there. It would be very and hard so, for you to look like a rat, but and okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I tried it, and now, that was in November, and I'm still going. And it saves me so much time. I can wake up, and I don't feel gross, and they I can go bad. out of the house. I'm jelly. Bad. I can't get them because I always get that things get getting stuck in my eyes, as yeah. you know. I always like, <laughs> yeah. And so I just know if I get them, I'm going to be poking myself, like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. But they look great on you. Thank you. They look great. Beautiful. Work Fun. Work yeah. I do have fake ones, though, just in case you're wondering, wow, <laughs> was she born with this? Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> they put these on me every episode. So it. Oh, it's so it. fun. But so I have fun. to peel them off, unlike <laughs> Becky. What yeah. about you, Em? Um, Any life well, beauty Well, you know hacks? what? My life hack is move to California because of <gasps> what? this. Okay, yes. now wait for this. So for those that don't know my story, it's I've true. been here almost eight years um, in general. I've lived in California for eight years. And I look at photos of myself then and now I'm like, Dang, California, you were good to me. California, like, it's the California. peer pressure. We're going to be talking about yes. the comparison later. You used to get offended. We'd be like, pressure. you look so oh, California. Yeah. And she would get offended. She's <gasps> like, no, I don't. I'm like, but you do. But bring it on but now. now ah, I've got it happening. California looks good on you. Thanks, guys. Same thing happened to me when I moved. You know, I had not had a mani or a petty ever in Australia. In your whole life? At, no. no. Why, why, would one, in why would one do that? You were just in Australia, right? But Yeah. It was like a novelty to me. Like, I was looking around, and I'm like, one, why are women wearing five layers of clothing and it's hot out? There's oh, just a lot of layering. So much fashion <laughs> going on. A lot on. of layering so happening. Fashion. Yeah, They're very yeah. current. And then, um, and then it was the messy hair and like the no makeup, which is cool and cute. I feel sometimes, but an all the time thing. I thought. Messy hair. Yeah. And I guess the difference. I this is how I grew up thinking. I grew up thinking I only want to wear makeup on special occasions, so it's special. Because oh. I would feel like I don't want to wear that now because I want to save it for something special. So Who told I you would. That? I feel I like I want to be special that. every day. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody's special, then nobody is. That's true. Remember that true. quote from The Incredibles? <laughs> uh, that's uh, like I want to dazzle. I so don't want to be like, oh, you look it. like you do every day at work. You know, oh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm. Yeah, it's funny. Up, you were saying you went back to Australia recently, though. It's kind of changed. I feel like it's it's becoming more this way. No, it's, yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's no, not. No, 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 I was okay. just there. It's Sorry, really Australia. Sad. I think America is affecting the world. Well, like, yeah, we, we love Australia, well. though. I love Australia. Good. This is good news. Yeah, this is of course we do. Everybody yeah. loves Australia. Everybody yeah. does. All right, let's get yes. into our first <laughs> fight. Because we're talking about home births versus hospital births today. Beautiful Michaela Ray, you're pregnant with baby number three. I am. I'm so excited. Yes. yes. Worth an applause. Life is always worth an applause. You've had two home births. I you have. are strongly considering having a third. Yes. I was at I was at both, kind of. I, you were wow. there when I was getting stitched up. Oh, right. my That's hand. real friendship right there. At your home? 
Yes. She, she is Katie a. I'm telling hands. you, she's a she's a rock star in the birthing. Were there were world. there were there drugs like involved in that? No, no, but that's why they have a home birth. They're yeah. not even a, a Tylenol. <laughs> Stacey, you're Clearly, I've not had children, and Stacey. I'm very concerned right now, but explain to Stacey's us. Stacey's going to get enlightened. So, home birth, it, you know, I, I would love to just dispel kind of the stigma around it because typically women think that it's for the hippie type of girl or the natural mm -hmm. granola type of yeah. girl. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't really look like a hippie, so, and I don't think of myself as a hippie, even though I love hippies. They're pretty incredible. Um, <laughs> but... Someone like me can have a home birth, and I'm finding that in the world today, so many more women who are your, your average girl or, you know, just a regular girl like me will have yeah. a home birth. And there's so many reasons why I think it's becoming more of an attractive option. Tell and us. Yeah, for me, yeah, okay. Stacey wants <laughs> to be enlightened. And me too. <laughs> maybe some other people here on the show want to be enlightened. But, um, you know, it's just a beautiful thing to me. Like, to right. be in your own home and, and to be um, in a place where you can make your own decisions, to be in a place yeah. where you aren't forced by different voices around you to do things that maybe you didn't intend on doing when you first went into labor. Right. Um, I just think that you have so much more control and it is so much more empowering to be able to do it in your own home with your husband, your friend, your midwife, right. and, and be able to make the choices you want to make. So for me, that's one of the main reasons why. So that I was the decision. You just wanted complete control over what the atmosphere felt like. Yeah and what was being done to your body and your baby. I'm going to ask this question. We're going to go to Emma in a second, but I want to ask this question. Heaven forbid there's some kind of issue. Yeah. What would happen then? That is a, then? a very fair question. Because right. I have thought about it, like we're close friends, mm -hmm. and, you know, there yeah. is that... Yeah. Yeah. level, tiny bit of anxiety Definitely. for me as your friend, like what if? Yeah. You have to make a wise choice when you are going to do a home birth because it's not for everyone. If mm -hmm. you're a high-risk pregnancy or you get any sort of advice that it's not the wisest idea, you, ha you have to listen. Like right. there's okay. obviously med medical advice out there that is, is wise and smart. Um, but I would say, and I've asked those questions to my own midwife. What if some, something happens? Like, how right. are we going to get to the hospital quickly? Yes. And we talk through all of those things. And there's okay. a plan B. There's a bag packed. You're ready to go. The midwife brings more equipment than you think. Like, they don't just Ooh, yeah. show up with their hand, like their two hands. <laughs> they, <laughs> they show up with, like, bags and oxygen tanks and, wow. and all sorts so of things prepped. that can actually help save a it's life. It's not they're rolling in, the moment. in yes. a caftan on roller skates, <laughs> smoking a marijuana yeah, joint. exactly. <laughs> right. Okay, like I'm you just would think I'm just I am dispelling the myths of what a midwife... Actually, you know what? I had midwife births in New Zealand mm -hmm. in a hospital or a birthing centre. That's mm -hmm. how they did it over there in NZ. Mm -hmm. Loved the experience. I felt them to be a lot more compassionate, knowledgeable yeah. and nurturing than a mm -hmm. doctor would be. Yeah, I think um, that you can create an atmosphere that is full of of faith and peace and the, the type of atmosphere that you like. And the one thing that, that I don't like in a hospital situation is that a lot of times fear is the overriding um, maker of choices when, right. when you're in the mm -hmm. moment. And That's a big issue. Yeah, fear. I, I think that if you're going to make the whether whether you make the decision to have a home birth or a hospital birth, not letting fear control that decision. Fear, fear not being your guide. Yeah. Right. Amen in, to that. In a level of massive crisis, mm -hmm. like, is 911 called? Or yes. is yeah. that last plan get to a hospital? You, you'd you have to make that decision in the moment. Your midwife would have to make that decision. Yes, 911 is always an option. Mm. But so I everything think, honestly, is laced with wisdom. Yes. So I have my, my yes. birth plan, my key, my desire, but I approach everything from the standpoint yeah. of wisdom. You're not stubborn right. enough to say, uh, I'm not going. Like, uh, I'm not going to call 911 right now and get a medical emergency right. attention. Right. If you I need a flexible. cesarean, I'm going to get one. You have to be flexible. flexible. Are you yes. ready? Are you ready? Uh -oh. We don't know if you're ready, Emma. Can I just start with this? And I know you were joking, but I love when we talked about this off camera. You were like, Emma, you just had an epidural because you were lazy. <gasps> like, come on. What happens <gasps> off camera what? stays off camera. It is like Vegas. Lucky that I know That's you I were and joking. Emma, we're friends, so I can joke with you like that. And it's we still love joke. each other. <laughs> I think this topic is so funny because I think people are very passionate either way. I'm a very pro epidural person. I know Jesus <laughs> loves me because epidurals exist. Yeah. Wow. So I just want to start with that. So I, like you haven't had a, a hospital birth, I haven't had a home birth, so I'm coming at it from my experience. 
right? Yeah. Um, I just, my thing always is, is that if you look at statistics, there's a much higher risk of death and injury in babies at mm -hmm. home birth. So mm -hmm. it's actually only like, there's less than 1% of the population that are choosing that way. But when I Googled it... Was it about 17,000? Yeah, it's like 17,000 people mm -hmm. in America. But if okay. you actually look at like the paediatric society... I think most of them are in California. It's probably all around <laughs> us, right. yes. But, um, you know, many of the professionals are not recommending that because if there is a problem, it does mm -hmm. take a little bit longer to get help. So, mm -hmm. I mean, my experience having an epidural was a really awesome one. Like, I, I arrived at the hospital, they gave me the glorious epidural, I went to sleep, <laughs> I woke up and I pushed out a baby and I was good to go. And did you did you feel it at all, really? I could feel all the pressure. I didn't see a lot of people feel, feel like they will be robbed of the experience. Mm -hmm. I felt like my experience was rich in okay. all... And, and juicy, that's the wrong word. But it had all the experiences in there. I got to experience it all and the pressure of it. And it was totally fine after. So I had a positive epidural experience. I just think um, a lot of new mums, maybe in our atmosphere, seem to have this thing like something is going to go horribly wrong with the epidural. So I, I'm excited to so say So there's that fear around it. There's fear on either camps. way. There's that fear on both if, camps. If you don't know, so you have, to, you have to know, you have to make wise choices, do your research. So because if you do an epidural, actually the rate of going to a C-section goes high. up like 10 more percent. Right. So you just have to make that decision. Yes, I'm going right. to get an epidural, but I'm 10% higher of maybe getting a C-section now that I've made that choice. I have a question for you. Yeah. Would you get a root canal at home? Probably not. Probably not. So I've this is my thing. Canal, but if you did, which I, I reckon is birth is way more painful, you would never do that at home. So that's always my question. Why would you do something equally as painful and wrought with complications like that? So that's for well, me. I'm I mean, not feeling without drugs before. Which is okay. Why? Me too. Why? Because, <laughs> because the shirt yes. they give you to to anaesthetize or to numb is more painful than the freaking oh, feeling. No, no, oh, no. Oh, and no, I can feel a second no. of injection instead of no. drilling down. Your tooth and possibly okay, right. hitting a so, nerve. Yeah, I wonder if right. you thing. don't have to, then why? There's a great combo like in between both. Because I know you are super passionate about home birth and you're super passionate about super. epidurals. <laughs> and about I epidurals. had I had drug free uh, deliveries in a hospital Lovely. because the, the thing like yeah if because I was for me I was thinking if something does go wrong I'd rather be in a hospital but like you said Kayla I would agree the hospital does really try to push their uh, agendas on your birthing oh, experience it's a lot so you of have to be super pressure. In yes. assertive right. and, and like they would are. be like you need yes, to be hooked up to all the uh, IVs and this and that in case something goes wrong I'm go I just go no I'm good and they're like no you need to put a hep block on I'm like oh, actually I'm okay and then they were like, you can't have any water or anything. And I go, oh, that's okay. I'll just do it when you leave the room. <laughs> like, I did. <laughs> like, if you're but not as strong, though, like, you, you right. have, have to an be strong in there with you. Because they you do. Because yeah. I wouldn't have the strength to go up against a medical practitioner right. and, and a seeming expert. And I had that experience. Yeah. I had one baby in America. I had two in New Zealand, one in Australia. I'm like the mother of the UN. Yeah. But I, <laughs> but in America, I was surprised at how forceful they were. Yes. And you must, you must, you must. And I'm like, this, no, I've you never, don't. I've had three hospital births prior. Right. I've never, ever had this much intense pressure. And they, they didn't, they, were, they spoke in absolutes. It wasn't, how would you feel about? Right. What do you think about? It was like, if you don't do this, you will die. I know. So you have to be very assertive. Oh. And, and, and you do have to do your research. I was intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say this? This is why like the question of why is for me because one of our good friends actually just had a baby and she was telling me about her birthing story and it didn't sound very fun it was 20 hours of being in writhing agony and I look at her story because yeah. she didn't do drugs she did do it in a hospital but without drugs because it's kind of two conversations here home birth versus hospital but epidural versus non-epidural and it mm. sounded like such a dramatic thing she was exhausted by the time the baby came she was yeah. exhausted like yeah. for me I'm like okay my experience was completely different I was quite well rested by the time I had the baby I was ready for what to me is the, the real painfulness which is breastfeeding that mm. comes shortly there after. Do you yeah. know, I'm like, why go through the pain if you don't need to? When the Lord has That's given a valid. us epidurals, it's a gift was from it heaven. Not? But was the it? Lord also <laughs> created your body to do what it was supposed to do. I just honestly, I think it's to each its own in this yeah, situation. It's true. It's true. And yes. I think I'm surprised how le uh, little feistiness we saw because I know how passionate you both are on this. <laughs> but, but I, I think at the her. end of the day, you do have to just what's right for my situation. Right. And we can't be like being all judgy Can with you? each other. Can you guys help us though with um, the judging? So comment fun. below. Judging so you fun. <laughs> Can you guys help us though with the? Um, there seems to be because it is very passionate. Typically, discussions and me not having a child, but listening to both stories. All my friends tell me their birth stories. And mm -hmm. can we just discuss a little bit of like? Sometimes it does go over the edge with like shaming one another. Like yes. I had 
no yeah. epidural and no pain. How like it actually like gets a bit extreme. A, you have a badge now because I did have yeah. an epidural Let's talk about this. Yes. for two of yes. the four births, and I agree with Emma in the sense that I was able to engage fully in the entire process when they told me to breathe, push. I was able to do that without like a panic because I'm feeling such intense pain. Whereas two of my other births, the, the contractions are coming one over the other over the other, so you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Mm. I felt the epidural actually made it easier for me yeah. to engage in the moment. Mm. And enjoy the moment. Yeah. So, and, I, I, and I've done it both I, ways. You, well, you but saw it is a badge. one of my videos, and she was just like, "That ruined me." Because honestly, like, you, if you're gonna have a birth. natural birth, you have to educate yourself. You have to be prepared mentally mm -hmm. and physically. I knew everything yeah. that was gonna happen. I literally told doc the doctor, "I'm like, I'm going into transition, aren't I?" And they were like, "Yep." Like I, I was ready, and I, you guys, my trick was like you have so to be successful. educated. Yeah. So like Bradley the whole thing classes. is grab the classes. Why they're the ones that are educated? Why? But do I, so this, but it was honestly. <laughs> why do I want to learn a medical degree? Uh, why do I, I, it's way too stressful. I'm I actually felt like, really, I did feel empowered. Do. I don't think people that don't have natural births are less empowered, but I actually felt really empowered, like to to go through that experience. And there are tricks like. You, I would, I barely made a noise when I was giving birth because the whole point is don't tense up. You have to let your body do. You, they hey, go. But you sound like, like you're dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like your presence. presence of no, birth and then if, the, if you're tensing, your your spouse or your helper is supposed to like the areas that's tense. You make them relax. So I literally was like acting like I was asleep, and I just go. Mm. She when I needed to be tended to. Super, super like, woman with super and husband. The baby no, it did. At point, can we not, like, it's like, I'm not less of a woman, or I don't get less credit right. for Every pushing out a human life. Do you feel that way? Because, because it's not about the pushing life. out, it's about the, the raising. Yes. Yes. It's about yes. the raising, and that's where the hard work begins in the yes. raising yes. of the child. I say, if you want to cut yourself a break and get an epidural and get that gas or whatever else they're dealing out these days, you rock on with your bad self. Oh, and will. then for those home birthers who are all okay. about the natural experience, for them. God bless you. <laughs> but we will we are not to be judged. All right. All right. You, are, you are an amazing, free. strong, wonderful woman. Yes, oh, you are, Emma. I respect you. Yeah. I respect you, Kayla. Oh, gosh. All right. We're silly. <laughs> With that confession of mutual respect, we will move on to our next topic. Why, and this actually dovetails perfectly, that was a partial clap. <laughs> Why is there competition amongst women? Like, what do you think that drives us? Uh. Why are we so competitive with one another? Whether it's home birth versus hospital birth and the plethora of other things that we can get agitated and competitive about. Oh, where goodness. did it start? When will it end? Where How did we start? Fix it? Where did it <laughs> where well, all the way back in the Bible, yeah. you see it. Hagar and Sarai, right. Lord have yeah. mercy. They yeah. had cat fighting down to an art. <laughs> I think sometimes we we need to learn how to like celebrate wins and successes with one another. What you know, so right. much surrounds like pain and hurt and all of this. I think as women, uh, why can't we just actually have a good time and have fun and celebrate, you know, celebrate all of the wins? And I do think it comes down to. Uh, insecurity. Right. If you're mm. confident in who you are and who God designed you to be, that is epivescent and it comes out. But sometimes mm. even that, and I found this, you know, I, um, you know, I have pretty strong opinions. I am, you know, confident and what? Uh, what? 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 <laughs> strong opinions. Um, and and that sometimes can intimidate people that are insecure about themselves. Right. And 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 I don't want to feel the need to have to conform to being sad uh, because. Other people maybe haven't gained that security, though that's, you know, they can be, you know, taught that and learned. So I think security is a, is, is a thing, being secure in oneself. Right. But I think it would be great if we can begin to celebrate with one another yeah. and not always be in the drama, you know, and right. the pain. And that can I be agree. hard, I think, for a lot of women simply because they don't feel like they're a match. And it's easier for me to try to make you less awesome yeah. well. than try to be, you know, kind of work on myself. Yeah. yeah. It's easier for me to say, Stacey, don't don't be confident. Mm -hmm. Stacey, don't be strong. Yeah. Don't yeah. be opinionated than actually find out who I am and live according to the strengths that God's and put learn on the inside our voice. of me. Yeah, learn yeah. our voices. And, and if you want what she's got, do what she does. That's I was gonna say, right. I love that. I was yeah. actually gonna say that, you know, I look at all my friends and I there's things I love about all my friends, but instead yeah. of like trying to be like that one friend, I take the great things from each of my friends That's awesome. and, and implement the, right. them into awesome. my own life. That's yes. Great. I think insecurity leads to then comparing yourself which yeah. then leads to competition. Yeah. And I remember, you know, dealing with this early on in ministry, you know, we used to, 
uh, there, we have three morning services at one of our campuses, and Pastor Leanne was preaching the two first messages, and then I had to get up after <laughs> Pastor Leanne and preach a message, and I was just sitting on the front row going like, oh, God, help me. Deliver me from this moment. I don't want to do this. Like, I'm not like Leanne. She's Aww, so amazing. Becky. And I remember the Holy Spirit just kind of rebuked me, and he said, well, it would be nice to have two Leannes. I think that would be actually great. God didn't need two Leannes. Mm. He needed a Leanne, and he needed a Becky. And I think my yeah. husband is grateful. <laughs> and I, you know, and we, you probably heard this before, but it's like God made you an original. Don't die a copy. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. think We're what really, really like breeds a lot of, of insecurity and the comparison and competition is not really understanding who you are. So then we try to be like other people to get acceptance, and, and trying to be like everyone else and come and compare will always leave you feeling inadequate because you were never meant to be like them. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's not that you're inadequate. You're just inadequate at trying to be Someone like somebody else. else. Yeah. Yes. Like, we really have to understand who we are and, and run our race, run in our lane. You know, I tell people, they're like, I wish I could do this or that. I'm like, well, God created you with special gifts, talents, abilities, a uniqueness that only you have, you have your lane and he needs you to run in it. And if you keep trying to bump the girl out of the lane next to you who's running in her lane, you will be disqualified. Mm -hmm. You're never going to finish the race that you are meant to to cross the line at the end of this life if you're continually going, oh, well, their race looks more fun and more glamorous. And this, no, run your race. Yeah. And you're going to be so excited and and happy. As if like you celebrate somebody else, well, that's all the celebration there is. Right. Well, <laughs> celebration famine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we've I celebrated her, so now it's done. done. Like right. we can celebrate and let the let the party continue. I saw it in corporate America. So before I was ever in ministry, I was in corporate America and I was in sales. And on our team, all of us had opportunities to hit our goals. And I remember I um, and it was you know God Himself that I was like. Um, you know, just killing it. Um, Come on. Yep, just doing it, you know. And I remember I was the newbie. Everybody was looking at me. They kind of expected me to fail. That's how I, I felt wow. uh, in the team. They, I heard the words, you know, you're green. Like, you're just starting out. And there was Ooh, all these people. Them's fighting with. Yeah, and, and look, it's, you know, that's the environment. I was in a sales Pumping. environment. Yeah. I was in an environment of you know, really competing, not just with one, one another, but even with self. I had to do better every single month wow. with sales. But I can remember, like, coming out of the gate and just having a whole lot of success. And instead of every, my own team coming around me and high-fiving, wow. everyone was like, what is she doing? How is she doing that? And, um, and so I felt that level. And I thank God that, you know, I had a manager at the time that was just like, you go, girl. Right. Like, you know, and, and it was a cool thing. But I think... You know, sadly, that atmosphere doesn't just exist, you know, in the church. It's corporate. It's the world. And I think that we have to be the solution in all the environments that we are in. And instead of me rising to that cattiness, I remember I would just, you know what? I started celebrating the other people around me. And um, even if words were spoken about me, I just didn't take them in. I just didn't receive them. I just decided, you know what? You're putting me down right now for doing something awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to receive right. that language. Yeah. So you're creating, secure. yeah, creating a counterculture right. yeah. to the one that's been the prevailing atmosphere in yeah. your workplace or your friendships. But, oh, sorry. Can Go I ahead. was going to say some of the like practically, like how do we do that? Yeah. So a couple of things that I've really noticed, and honestly, I really noticed it moving to America because I think something that American does really well is encourage each other. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. I hadn't come Agreed. from that, so it was quite stark when I got yeah. here. But here's some of the things that I think create great atmosphere. Right. I love every time my friend has a birthday dinner, taking some time to go around and celebrate what we love about this person. Yeah. Like I just love of all the gifts we can give our friends, yeah. you know, isn't like Gucci, though, feel free, feel free. But <laughs> it's actually... don't give Emma a gift, she will give you a hard time until you give her one. Yes. Oh, I gave Becky a gift, and gift then Emma shaming. was mad that I didn't get her one as no well. No lush I bath bomb for Emma. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, the Lord is listening. But thank God for the honesty, the, the conversation's <laughs> happening, so that's good. But look for any opportunity to encourage and bring this culture right. around. So I just think, I'm my job is to speak life over my friends. I'm a steward yeah. of that friendship, and it's like, they give you access to their garden, and I want to be a great waterer of that garden, you know? I don't want to add 
thorns. I don't want to be something. I want to right. make my friends look better after they've hung out with me. So any opportunity you have to like celebrate your friends in all different seasons and know your friends well enough. There's some seasons where you actually have to be very intentional about celebrating your friends. When our friends just have babies and you're going through that yeah. whole season where you yeah. smell like spit up and your boobs are everywhere and it's this whole thing. <laughs> More than ever, tell them how awesome they look and what a great job they're right. doing. And that's going to be over. Like Any opportunity you have to celebrate, let's take it. And I think you can do that because you understand something that Stacey kind of touched on is that saying, you know, someone's beautiful does not make you less beautiful. Right. Yes. right. Celebrating yes. someone's successes yes. doesn't mean that you're not mm -hmm. also successful. It's like we, we do that. It's, and you've said this, I think, Leanne, you've said like, you know, like encouragement, we should, it shouldn't be in limited supply. Like no. we just need to continually encourage and, and well, champion each other. Well, I think so many other. people live, yeah. yeah, so many people live discouraged, mm, which means right. they need courage put in them. Wow. And that's, that's what true. encouragement is. And a lot of this competition comes from feelings, I think we've said it, all of us have said it from feelings of inadequacy. Right. We feel inadequate. We feel like we're not enough. Right. Yeah. So thank God, hopefully, that we have friends who can put courage in yeah. us when we're feeling discouraged. And um, we all, even the most confident of women, oh, have low have times. Moments. We have moments. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I don't pretend because I'm confident that I never have those moments of feeling sure. that way. I think sure. we all do. Mm -hmm. So I think just self-assessing mm -hmm. is a really good thing and, and being able to reach out to the friends that we need to when we are feeling low. Would you say transparency too? Like yeah. I love that you can say, you know what, I'm not having a good day. When we're yeah. actually real with each other, it makes yes. us all relax a little bit. Cause you know, right. I'm not like, I look at, I watch the movie Wonder Woman and I look at her, I'm like, see, I need to know oh. your story. I need to know there's something there that isn't perfect. Cause if I just looked at you and didn't know what was going on, like I would never live up to that. And that's where the competitive and comparison comes in. So just be as transparent yeah. in a thing I agree, I agree. Just, uh, yeah. I think we should never have to dim down who we are mm -hmm. in order to make other people feel good but I think there is just such a power in being honest and real. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think uh, yeah. social media has really made that more difficult again, right. and we seem to be bringing this up every week, but because we're getting people's highlight reels and we automatically assume they don't have a bad day. Right. They're yeah. a perfect mom, a perfect wife. Even their coffee foam design is epic. <laughs> you know, so we have, you know, we're not seeing the hashtag real life. Right. Well, I think, Leanne, you, I remember you telling me a long time ago, and I've always just um, tried to keep with it. You had told me, if you ever have a compliment, don't keep it to yourself. Right. And you actually encourage nice. me anytime yes. you actually think, because how many Say times it. do we all think, oh my gosh, she looks so beautiful. And instead Say of it. saying it, we just hold Say that it, close. Yep. And I started to do that and I felt my life getting even more enriched. Mm -hmm. um, so every time I thought she looks beautiful, that's a pretty top. Instead of keeping that to myself, I actually share it with my friends, and that's just a tip that's helped yeah. me yes. along the way. Yes, well, if you see something, say something. I know that's a very common phrase out there right now in regards to other issues, but I think when it comes to yeah. us girls, and even men, if you see something praiseworthy, point it out. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And can we just say, I know we were chatting earlier about like the whole idea of keeping up with the Joneses, and we've mm. touched on it, but... You know, it's it's. We also need to understand the season that we're in, because like you see what people are posting in the new home and this and that. That doesn't mean you're not going to get there. Mm. Don't be envious. Be excited for them, and then know what's going to happen for you. Like we can't mm. keep trying to keep up with everybody's highlight reels. You know, that there was the funny one of those funny little posts on social media, and it says, "I'm sorry, I I can't be awesome today because I'm so freaking tired from being trying to be awesome yesterday." <laughs> you know, yeah. like why do we have to be awesome every day? Like we can have a moment. We don't have to always yeah. keep up. And, yeah. and I think if we ever feel those moments of jealousy, let's call yeah. it what it is. Yeah. Right. Jealousy. I know yeah. for me, honestly, when I do look at Instagram, I start to feel jealous. Then I'm like, you get like two likes. I'm going to leave yes, a comment I now. Leave a yes, comment. Because yes. I need to actually yeah. have a response yes. and an action to a wrong feeling. Yes. Because feelings Wait, can be right, right, but also feelings yeah, can be wrong. Right. And we have to tell ourselves sometimes to get in line. Mm -hmm. And so I know for, for me, you know, if I do start to have those feelings rise up of jealousy or competition, then I've, mm -hmm. I've given my own self a rule that then yeah. I need to go and do an action that is opposite of that particular feeling. Yeah, okay. awesome. so good. I've got That's a really, really great book, actually. Yes, tell us. When I first came into the, this world of being around Christian women, I was so insecure. And even to the point where when someone would tell me I was beautiful, I'm like... Oh, like it freaked me out. You couldn't take but it. But I read um, The Confident Woman by Joyce Meyer and it yeah, completely right. changed right. my life. Like it completely yeah. changed my outlook on beauty, on how to be confident, on how to deal with 
insecurity Such a great and resource. all those things. Though. Yeah, she's a great woman, she's Joyce Meyer. I would highly recommend all of her books. I think Jesus had it right when he said, "Do unto others as you would have done unto you." Right. And I think, what kind of friend do we want to have? Let's be that friend yeah. Yeah. and ask ourselves the question: Would I want to be friends with me? Yeah. And if the answer is no, then maybe there's some time to do some self-reflecting. What things do I need yeah. to cut off? What things do I need to bring as an addition to my life and the way I do friendship? Yeah. Because it's, you know, Bible says little foxes spoil the vine. And I think comparison and competition yeah. are one of those little foxes. So true. We have to be very aware that exists in the world. Well, we are done for today. <laughs> Such a fun episode. So great chatting with you girls. Next week. On Thursday, we can be joined on Facebook and YouTube. We're going to be talking about what does successful leadership look like for women. That's going to be a fun yeah, one. Fun. And then also how to deal with fear and anxiety, and that's a mm. huge one. So we want you to share and comment and join us next Thursday for Cherish TV. We love you, beautiful people. We love bringing you a different view. See you next week. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. She girds herself with strength and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come.